Hey everybody, this is Jason from the Children's Museum of Houston, here to talk to you a little bit more about geology, this fine, fine geology unit. This time we're going to do some more sort of uh, chemical eruptions to give the kids an idea of what a core sample is. Now, when we talk about core samples, we're talking about taking a sample from the earth. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be a rock sample, it could also be an ice sample. One of the most famous core samples ever taken was from ice because these Russian scientists found inside this layer of ice that was 100,000 years old, these bacteria. And they thought, of course, logically so, that these bacteria were long dead when they determined that it was a 100,000 year old piece of ice. But after the ice warmed up, the bacteria began to move again. So they'd really only been in a dormant stage for 100,000 years. And what actually occurred was when they got a little bit of water inside them, they were able to move around again. So. That's what we call an extremophile, uh, sort of animal or plant, a living thing really, that can uh, live in these extreme conditions and live for a long, long time within them. So core samples have become somewhat famous because of that one ice core sample. So you could take core samples of rock layers, you could take core samples really technically inside the ocean as well, inside of soils and things like that. So we're going to give the kids the idea of how to take a core sample by making some chemical eruptions. So you can see before me I have a chipboard with basically a bottle cap in the middle. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some measuring in this one as well. So we have a measuring spoon system here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a teaspoon of baking soda. Make sure they do it really fine. And we're going to pour that teaspoon of baking soda inside this bottle cap. After we're done with that, we're going to measure out. You can either use the measuring cup or you can use these little one ounce cups. Uh, the measuring cup is a good way of doing it because it allows them to measure more uh, accurately. In a sense, it's two ounces the first measure and we want an ounce of vinegar. So they have to kind of figure out what a half would be. So you can do it to give them that idea of estimation as well or you can just go ahead and uh, pour this inside this cup here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, do that. Do an ounce of vinegar. And then you're gonna do what any logical thing would be. You're gonna pour the vinegar inside the baking soda and you're gonna cause a volcanic eruption. And you wanna pour it all in. And you wanna pour it kinda of slowly like I did here. Now this is where it's gonna take a minute. You gotta let it settle. Make sure the kids don't start to immediately do anything. Let it settle. Let all the bubbles go away. Okay? I know that's sort of a, the patience game, but that's what we want them to do. Now, observe where the volcano erupted. It kind of erupted in this area here. It didn't really go this way all that much, and it actually went out the furthest this way. What we're going to do once we settle it is you're going to take some Play-Doh, one color, and with a very, very fine layer of Play-Doh. And you don't have to use just one, uh, uh, you can use little pieces at a time. You're going to go ahead and put it all over where the volcano erupted. So you can take a big chunk and spread it out, or you can take little pieces at a time like I said in the beginning. I usually do the big chunk and spread it out. But you want to spread it out very, very thin. Okay? You're going to be doing this in groups of four, so you want to make sure every kid has enough Play-Doh. Every group has enough plate already. really. It's okay if this moves a little bit, but get it always back in the middle if it does. So you're going to go ahead and spread it out, and if you need more, you're going to grab more. But try to spread it out as thin as you can. This one's a little messy, as you can tell. But that's okay. Kids like messy stuff. Alright, I need a little bit more, so I'm going to get another chunk. And I'm going to spread it out this way. And again, you want to put it everywhere you have the eruption. So it goes right up to the bottle cap. That's when you also can use little chunks as well, right when the bottle cap is coming. So this would be the first eruption. So you get the idea. Put a little bit over here. Again, thin layer, as thin as you can make it. And then just 
just a little bit in the front and we got this. And it's okay if it goes over a little bit, you just don't want to go under. And what eventually is going to happen is the Play-Doh is going to hold this cup in its place. Alright, so there you go. You've got your first layer of volcanism. And if it starts to spread out afterwards, they can continue adding or they can go to the next one. So you're going to do this four times. So I'm going to do it another time just to demonstrate how it would be done. So you're going to go ahead and again. Put another teaspoon of baking soda. And you're going to again, going to put another ounce of vinegar. And you're going to erupt it again slowly. Now you can see on top of this layer where the new lava is going and you're going to spread it onto the new lava. So we'll take green this time. And remember, let it settle. But you see how it's all coming out this way? So all green would be over here, coming out over this way. And you would just put this on top. Again, a thin layer. So you're going to put this on top of the purple. Spread it out. Now it didn't go everywhere. It's not over here, it's not over here, it's not over there. But it did spread out this way a little bit more than the other. So you want to put the green over here too to show new lava flows. So basically what we're demonstrating here is how volcanoes form actually in a lot of ways. So you guys know about the Hawaiian Islands. Well, there's what they're called hotspot volcanoes. There's one big volcanic area and since the earth moves on plates, it's moved around and it's caused the Hawaiian Islands to form. So there's actually the Hawaiian Islands forming to this day. They're not stopped. They're still once forming. This is also what formed the biggest volcano in the solar system, Olympus Mons, which is on Mars. There was just this continuing outpour of, vulc of lava from a volcano and it went onto certain areas. So as you can see, it's building up around the hotspot, this volcano. So that's a good lesson to teach them too talking about what this actually is doing. So make sure it stays on top. If it spreads out a little bit, that's okay. But you, if it starts to dry, you can really see where it went because the uh, baking soda will start to dry or start to come out. And you're basically making land formations here. You're making these different land forms and so kids can see. So I'm gonna stop there because you kind of get the point. But then it comes down to getting a core sample. And the way you get a core sample is you're gonna give the kids, after you do this two more times, you see there's four colors, there's green, orange, yellow, and purple. After you do it a few more times, there's gonna be three, four layers here. You basically take your straw, you shove it in, and when it comes out, you're hopefully gonna have, you might have to do it a few times, you're gonna to start to get these little layering bits that stay inside the straw, hopefully. What you might have to do is wait for it to dry a little bit more. Uh, this right here is still a little bit wet. So you might have to let it dry a little more, but you're gonna shove your straw in and eventually, there you go, you get a little core sample. You can see the purple on the bottom and the green on the top. So really let it dry and if you get more than one color and you start to build it up, it's gonna core sample very, very good. And each kid gets four straws, so they can each do a couple of core samples. So, again, there's a little bit of experimentation going on in this one. You're trying to get all these different colors, and sometimes you gotta kind of experiment with it and kind of keep pushing it in and trying to get different things out. So that you can see, 
Now, the whole idea of this is the layer that's on the bottom, which would be the purple, is actually the oldest layer of the group. And then when you start to have more and more, you'll start to see that there's a green group, an orange group, a yellow group, whatever color we give you, you'll start to see that there's these different layers of earth that were created by this volcano, and the further down you go, the older it gets. So that is what you want to do in order to make a core sample. And as you can see, this one now is pretty good. After doing it a few times, you get this nice little layering going on with the green and the purple. Like I said, do the more colors. It's just, if you keep watching me do this over and over again, I'm gonna have nothing to talk about after a while. And let it dry. Letting it dry is really important because while it's wet, it's gonna slip and slide. The more dry it is, the better it will be for your core samples. Now you might be wondering what the markers and the scissors are for. Sometimes kids wanna take stuff like this home to show their parents. So what they can do is they can mark around the uh, lava they created with the marker and then cut around that and take that home with them and cut up into pieces so if, say three kids want to take it home they each can take a piece home. Again you're going to do this in groups of four, you're not going to do this individual kids. There's not enough play-doh and enough supplies for each kid to do it themselves. But that's why we do it four times so each kid gets to pour baking soda in then vinegar in and then do a layer. Pour baking soda in vinegar and do a layer on and on. Okay? And also I, like I said I didn't go all the way over to the green on here which I should have Again, I just didn't want you to have to sit here while I kept doing things like that. But you would want to cover everything on the new amount of um, lava with a new color. Okay? So that is core samples. I hope you guys enjoy this. Kids really have fun with this one because there's a lot of things going on and it's really, really messy. So I know your kids will have fun, but you have fun too. And make sure they get these concepts across so they have an understanding of how this is a geologic force creating a landform. All right, thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.